You know, I have noticed something strange about most lead code tutorials, but they never really explain how to recognize what kind of problem you are even looking at. It's almost like they expect you to already have that magical pattern recognition skill. And if you go searching for an advice, everyone says the same thing. You just need intuition. Okay, but where on earth am I supposed to get that from? When I first started, I had no idea how to classify problems. I would spend way too much time guessing an approach, trying random ideas and hoping one worked. But after solving over 900 lead code problems, I started noticing something. There were certain steps I always took without even thinking and they worked over and over again to help me figure out the right pattern. So I decided to turn those steps into a proper list and I have put that list in the description so you can download it. Let's go through this list together because once you get this down, you'll be able to eliminate most wrong approaches before you even start coding. The very first thing I do when I open a problem is I scroll straight to the constraints. I don't even read the full question yet. Why? Because constraints tell you how big the input can get and that instantly tells you what's possible and what's not. If the maximum input size is small, like 20 or less, that's basically an open invitation for brute force, recursion or backtracking. The total number of solutions is so small that you can just try them all without worrying about the time limits. But if the input is huge up to 10 raised to 5 or 10 raised to 6, you immediately know that brute force is not going to work. You will need something more efficient like O of n or O of log n. That's when you start thinking about greedy solutions, two pointers, heaps or dynamic programming. And if the input is insanely large, like around to 10 raised to 8 or more, you basically have no choice. You will need an O of log n or O of 1 solution, maybe binary search, maybe a math trick, but nothing slower than that will work. Once I have read the constraints, I look at the input format. This is where the problem often reveals its type. If it's tree or binary search tree, you can almost bet it's a traversal problem. DFS if you need to explore every path or visit every node. BFS if you are going level by level. If they mention pre-order, in-order or post-order, that's just DFS with a specific order. If it's graph with nodes and edges, you are looking at a BFS or DFS again. And sometimes union find, especially if they talk about connected components or groups. If the input is sorted array, that's your signal for two pointers, binary search or maybe a greedy approach. Because sorted data can be exploited to save time. And if it's just a plain array or a single number, you don't stop there. You look deeper at the actual question text. Then comes the output format. This is another big clue. If the output is list of list, like all subsets, all parts or all combinations, that almost always means backtracking. If the output is a single number like maximum profit, minimum cost or number of ways to do something, it's often dynamic programming or greedy. If the output is a modified array or a string, maybe removing duplicates in place, reversing a list or rotating an array, that usually suggests a two-pointer approach. And the output is sorted list, well, you are probably dealing with some form of sorting or even a topological sort in graph problems. By now, you have already got a strong idea of what kind of problem this is, but the final filter is keywords. The problem description is full of them. If you know what to look, phrase like number of ways, longest subsequence or shortest path, scream dynamic programming. Words like palindrome or sorted array often point straight to two pointers. If you see k largest or k smallest, start thinking about heaps. If there are parentheses, it directly means stack. If the question mentions next greater element, next smaller element, usually it means a monotonic stack problem. If the question has frequency or duplicates mentioned, it makes me think of hash maps. If it's about a word search or checking prefix, that's a try. If you see merge intervals or check intervals, it's an interval problem. If you see connected components, it's almost always union fine. If you see something like minimize the maximum, it's probably binary search. Now I know this sounds like a lot, but here's the good news. You don't need to memorize all of it at once. When I was learning, I just started with the constraints that alone helped me throw out most bad approaches instantly. Then I slowly added the input and output checks. Then I trained myself to notice the keywords. Two methods helped me most. First, I would pick one pattern like binary search and do 5 to 10 problems in a row just from that pattern. After a while, you start to see the same signals repeat over and over. Second, I would go through the lead code entire problems list not to solve them, but to just read the problem descriptions and guess the category. It didn't matter if it was hard or easy. I was training my brain to classify problems before solving them. And here's a tip that I still use. Keep a personal keyword list. Every time you see a phrase that links to a specific approach, write it down. Over time, you will build your own cheat sheet that's way more valuable than anything you will find online because it's based on your own experience. 
सो दैट्स माय अप्रोच स्टार्ट विद द कंस्टेंट्स लुक एट द इनपुट टाइप लुक एट आउटपुट टाइप स्कैन फॉर कीवर्ड्स एंड विद प्रैक्टिस यू विल बी एबल टू रिकॉग्नाइज द पैटर्न बिफोर यू इवन थिंक अबाउट कोडिंग द लिस्ट इज इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट यूजिंग इट टूडे ट्रस्ट मी इट विल सेव यू अ टर्न ऑफ वेस्टेड टाइम एंड फ्रस्ट्रेशन एंड इट विल मेक यू वे फास्टर इन इंटरव्यूज इफ यू थिंक आई हैव क्रिएटेड अ बिट वैल्यू फॉर यू काइंडली लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब